thank you all, you know, and I'm happy to present to you um, a piece of work we did in the in the recent couple of weeks, and that representing the global state of customer centricity in pharma. Um, I have the pleasure to present today. I'm having up a consulting company called Relations, and the general manager of the Americas is also in the audience, and that's Bradley Trittle. Um, you know, what is on the agenda today? A uh, couple of things. First of all, very briefly, who we are. Um, a second topic is about, you know, the index itself, how it is composed, going to the key insights and then, you know, closing with a couple of key takeaways. And of course, I think at the end, there is still some time for some Q&A and happy to receive them also via chat in any way. You know, who's not in fact relations? Uh, very important, we help pharmaceutical medtech companies to develop very impactful strategy to come to a leadership position in the market via customer centricity. And something very unique we do it, we do it via what we call superior analytics and team mobilization. Let me come back to that and I will happy to present it. Um, our company in a summary, um, 20 years, uh, we're in business uh, exactly this year. Um, more than 100 consultants, very specialized in pharma and medtech, uh, working across the globe for the moment, online today. Uh, four offices where we serve our customers from, uh, one in New York, uh, one in Tokyo, and then two in Europe, one in Antwerp, and the other one in Basel in Switzerland. Um, serving from these offices more than 50 countries worldwide and also in, in 30, what we say, specialty or disease area. Yeah, so very briefly, you know, who we are and what we do. And we serve our customers, in fact, with, I would say, three main services. Yeah? Um, it is in designing, installing customer-centric strategy, almost a copy of, you know, the program of today the summit. And the first bucket is all about how to become leading in the market via customer centricity. Uh, that's all about how to win grow in very competitive marketing, understanding very clearly how to win tomorrow, what is driving our own company's performance. And also, you know, like I mentioned, how to become a leader in patient centricity, physician investigator, and access stakeholder centricity. So main bucket i would say very important for today the second one is around launches in terms of you know what is successful launches we don't have share yet so we have a set of kpis where we are measuring and having benchmarks designing go-to-market strategy and also internally readiness assessment what is needed missing for correct implementation last but not least it's also about you know interaction strategies digital omni-channel where we define you know what is the optimal interaction that we need to have for the maximum customer experience it's also about reallocating resources what we see today in the new era and of course you know effective personalized interaction strategy in the new normal that we encounter today as mentioned you know we give guidance and actionability and you know differentiation two elements fact-based data-driven decision making sophisticated systems that we have in the back but also the human side is all about mobilizing team for impactful actions two components which we think are essential for successful programs briefly you know who we are and i think you know you all hear very specific to know about you know what is in fact the whole story about customer centricity. Now, two key questions is first of all from, you know, being customer centric, patient, physician, investigator, you know, what is the real impact of it? And second, if we then see if it's important, where are companies positioned? And like I mentioned, it's a survey we did across the globe. So we look to different regions, but our focus 
today is the US. Um, you see uh, data is collected um, from February to March. So what I'm showing to you today is a sneak preview. Uh, you're the first one to, to see the data. It is, of course, like an online collected survey. And we look to the region, uh, G5 countries in EMEA, the US, Brazil, China, Japan, and Australia. And we looked in this survey to uh, five, I would say, treatment areas, franchises, whatever the name, including more than 380 hematologists and oncologists, and more than 250 dermatologists, rheumatologists, and gastroenterologists. And you already see it by the loaded picture that, you know, we collected information from more than 45 companies, you know, to have a, a very good view in terms of, you know, what is happening in the market. And there are very solid, already established companies, but also some newcomers who wants to know where they are. Looking to the insights, what in fact comes out out of this overall um, data collection. Customer centricity on one side, and you can imagine we cannot separate it fully from the customer interaction that you're doing every day. And of course, there is also the pandemic with lockdown situation. There's quite some impact that we see. And, you know, it, it, it's very different region by region across the globe. We see already in China that, you know, it's something from the past. In Europe today, it is a reality um, again, I would say, and other regions of the world are also in there. So let's first have a look to the numbers that we see in the US and then look to a couple of regional insights. The way we look to that pharma uh, customer centricity index is that's composed by the view on the physician and also the company's position in terms of patient centricity. So both are used to compose that pharma customer centricity. Maybe the first element which is so important, yeah? um, and that is really about, is it now paying off being customer centric? And there's one number in the middle in bold, which is you know telling the whole story. If we are able, to shift from a non-physician centric, non-patient centric company on this left side, moving to a patient centric, most physician centric companies, the shares go up uh, with a factor of two. Um, it, it shows very clearly in terms from, you know, that, that customer centricity, how today is impacting more and more you know, the, the position of the brand and the company in a more competitive area. Yeah? Uh, we see companies becoming closer to each other, more brands are coming within treatment areas, and the whole becoming centric to patient and physician becomes so much important. What you also can see, and what's, what's also a nice takeaway, if you go the route in terms of becoming more patient-centric, or more physician centric, almost equal. Yeah. So we don't see like big differences over there in first a need to become physician centric than patient centric. Both have their value and, and roughly the same contribution overall. So that's the first insight that we want to give. You know, a customer -centric centricity really matters in terms of impacting on the business. And how are now companies performing? And what we did over here is that we grouped dermatology, rheumatology, and gastroenterology in one bucket, immunology. And that's for reasons of the presentation. Data is available separately. But today, I'm, you know, I'm going to try to summarize it and box it in 15, 20 minutes to present to you. So immunology and the second big bucket that we made is Hema Onco, you know, which is obvious what the name is telling, a combination of hematology and oncology. What we see if we look to immunology, and this is the second time 
we are doing this survey. Exactly one year ago, results uh, in March 2020, which are in more an orange color. The most recent results, you know, just arrived, I think a couple of days ago, is in light blue. And what you see is in terms of the ranking, the ranking in customer centricity, combining physician and patient centricity of the different companies in the US uh, stated by physicians. And what we see, AbbVie clearly as the absolute leader in immunology, you know, shifted a little bit down because the score, I think, of last year was maybe a little bit too much, but still very clear the number one the leader followed by janssen which is the pharmaceutical company of johnson and johnson and then closely followed by pfizer amgen takeda eli Lilly, and then down with novartis regeneron genentech and bms lg but you see now that there is a closer more fierce competition between the number two and the number five six versus the absolute number one in immunology. If we look to hemato-oncology, there we see more closer call. Eh? We see there Merck being the number one, um, you know, and that's shifted to position because BMS cell gene was last year the number one. Now they are, you know, in second position, but it's a close call versus Merck. Number three, Pfizer, also a strong runner-up. Uh, we see significant improvement. Roche slightly going down, Novartis, AstraZeneca, um, Janssen, who took a small hit, both in oncology, hematology, going backward versus previous year. And then we see ABV, Sanofi Genzyme, and Bayer. Now, that's the overall view. If you now have a look to, you know, what is now happening on immunology, if we look to patient versus physician centricity. What we see over there is that AbbVie, you know, is the leader in both, both in patients as in physician centricity. But we see that, you know, the, the ranking is a little bit more towards the side of the patient centricity. While the number two, Janssen, uh, pharmaceutical division of Johnson and Johnson, you know, is almost balanced ideally in the middle, having, you know, being perceived as giving attention to almost equally both. Pfizer a little bit more patient centric again, Amgen more physician centric. And then we see for Takeda, Lilly, Novartis, Regeneron, Genentech a little bit, and BMS Celgene, that they are somewhat anchored in the middle yeah no, no choice made yet and they, they they want to give attention to both of it and so that's the first one that we're looking here into the immunology market if we look to hema onco yeah what we see over there yeah, number one that we saw was merck yeah and, and what we see over there is that you know th their physician centricity is much stronger and more impactful than their patient centricity because here the leader in patient centricity is BMS Celgene. Yeah, almost equal here on physician centricity. And you see that patient centricity, you know, has given a little bit less weight in this treatment area than uh, the physician centricity. Pfizer, a little bit more patient centric, Roche, somewhat in the middle. The only, I would say, deviating from the middle is like Janssen from Johnson & Johnson, who's clearly more patient-centric than physician-centric. Happy, somewhat the opposite. So we see very clearly in terms of results, shifts in ranking, uh, B, uh, Merck taking over from uh, BMS, being much more physician-centric, similar as Abfi, and the patient centric here is mainly Janssen, what we're seeing overall. So that's, you know, how these companies are performing today. Now, like I mentioned, there's also some regional insights because, you know, it's the global state 
of customer centricity. So let's now look a little bit to what the different regions are doing or how they state. We just saw for immunology, yeah, um, that we in the US, number one, uh, very clearly AbbVie, followed by Janssen and Pfizer. And what we see across the world that these three also, you know, play a very important role in all the other regions. Uh, what we see, for example, in China is that AbbVie, you know, remains the number one, distances become smaller, yeah. Pfizer number two, Janssen the number three. Yeah? So they're switching a little bit positions. When we look to the uh, EU five countries, Abvi still the leader, Janssen the second, a little bit more of a distance, and Pfizer becoming or coming at a fifth position. Lilly and Novartis are there, you know, uh, on position three and four. When we go to Japan, um, what we saw last year that Maruha, a very strong player in immunology in Japan, a Japanese company, is not any the number one anymore, but is replaced by Abfi. And what we see in Japan is that you know Janssen and Pfizer come there on a lower position. Takeda, Tanebe, Mitsubishi, Mahuro, typical Japanese company take their position two, three, and four. We see in Japan that promotion, co-promotion is very important, and Japanese companies are very strong in terms of physician patient centricity. When we look to Brazil, we see that Janssen becoming the number one, strongly leading ahead of Abfi. Pfizer again to the fifth position. Number three is Novartis, number four, Takeda. And then for Australia, what we see is that, you know, the number one and two in most of the regions stay the number one and two. Abvi followed by Janssen, Novartis number three and Pfizer number four. So we see that, you know, the same group of companies, you know, playing there for the positions or the key positions in the field. It's another story in Hema Onko, eh, where we see that it clearly, you know, the leaders, you know, BMS cell gene seems to be coming everywhere a little bit, but there's quite some differences that we see over there. If you look to the US, like we mentioned, Merck number one, followed by BMS cell gene number three, Pfizer, then followed by Roche and Novartis, two, the Swiss two Ongo houses. Yeah? When we look to China, Roche becomes number one. Yeah. AstraZeneca number two, Janssen number three, the local company Hengru number four, and MSD number five, and number one in the US. When we look to EU five countries, we see that Janssen takes the first position, yeah, followed by BMS cell gene. And again, Roche Novartis, strong onco houses on position three and four, followed by AstraZeneca. Japan, it's not Rush, but Shugai, you know, the, uh, I would say, co-promoter is a little bit under, undervalued, but a strong cooperation company of Rush in Japan is their D number one, followed by Janssen, BMS LG, Novartis, AstraZeneca. And in Brazil, we see Janssen again, S number one, followed by the two Swiss companies, Novartis, Rush, Pfizer, BMS on position four and five. Australia, they receive BMS cell genus number one, Janssen number two, Rush number three, followed by MSD, the number one in the US, and AstraZeneca number five. So we see clearly, clearly if, if we look across the globe, customer centricity of the different companies in this very competitive market is viewed in a different way. By the way, I'm not saying that immunology is not competitive. I, I think it's even on the same level. Now, we talked about customer centricity, but there's another element which is very important is customer interaction. Yeah? And if we look to that in, a, in a, an element, let's look a little bit to the interaction experience. Yeah? We looked at saying, you know, 
which of the, the following companies and their ranking of the companies is still the one as they scored on the customer centricity index. And so let that be very clear. But here we had a question specifically around, you know, what is the ranking on the companies on the best interaction experience? Now we see within immunology that, you know, th that same index follow very closely the customer centricity elements. Yeah? So almost no difference that we see Pfizer a little bit lower than last year in third position, but that get a little bit ahead of engine, but, you know, close follow up over there. When we look to hemato-onco, we see roughly the same. Yeah, the only thing rush a little bit below, uh, but still overall ahead of Novartis. Yeah, and Merck and BMS also what we see over here, changing positions, BMS leader of last year, Merck the leader of this year. But this is the score on the best interaction experience. Now, in that interaction experience, when we look to immunology, we have, of course, as you know, two aspects. There is not only the quantity of interaction, there's also a very important an interaction quality. Yeah. And both are rankings. Eh? The, the, the scale that we give you over here is the number percentage of physicians ranking the company with ideal frequency of interaction first. And if you look to quality, the physicians ranking company but best quality of interaction first. And what we see again over here, you know, a lot of centered in the middle, yeah, uh, that we see in terms of, you know, only Eli Lilly a little bit more quality than quantity, Regeneron a little bit more quantity than quality, but you see every time perfectly in the middle and no surprises over here when we look on immunology. If we look on the other side to hemato-onco and we look to the quantity versus quality, I think also almost the same ranking that we see in quantity and quality as one surprise, that's Pfizer. Yeah? Where we see that based on the, you know, the, the interaction experience, yeah, we would say Pfizer is ranking lower. While if we look to the overall number, they were doing fine. Yeah? So it's more like, you know, is then the quality and the quality of interaction not showing everything. It isn't. Yeah? And, you know, also we looked a little bit deeper in terms of what is now explaining this deviation. And if we then look uh, a little bit deeper, and now I'm, I'm showing a panel which is showing the scoring of the company on two important characteristics and still in the US. The pink purple bar is more about the engagement is very personalized. The, the green yellow line is more about the engagement is in a very harmonized way. Across channel we receive the same message. And what we see over there is that in Hemato Onko we saw that Pfizer Although the quality and the quantity interaction of lower, they just were still received a very nice rating on the interaction experience. And what we see, what Pfizer is doing magically, is they work very personalized. They receive the highest score of all. Yeah, even I think uh, almost better than Takeda when we look to immunology. So what we see is that you know even quality and quantity is lower than market average or what you would expect at a certain level, being personalized is such a strong leverage in terms of increasing your engagement, your interaction experience. So, you know, very important to recall and to remember. A final set of panels around the omni-channel approach, very briefly, because you know, the interaction experience, let's be honest, it, it is a, an, an, an essential part of that customer experience. Yeah? The interaction and customers very close to each other. There were the customer experiences around the reputation, the value, product access, etc. The interaction experience is all about the content, the novelty, the convenience, the visual design, etc. And 
to show that yeah we we have taken an example of of you know a, a very novelty service we're doing uh, and this is an example of of uh, you know um emea um recent this year and we have the same service in the us where we're looking to you know that that interaction experience index we're talking about how are companies performing in one of the most used channel during lockdown which is email and what we saw is that you know um if we looked at experience index novartis was doing very well ahead of abv which is then slightly ahead of Janssen, which is almost equal. And based on that, you know, sophisticated interviewing via voice of video from this physician, we, we received some information about what is now making Novartis so unique. It's a combination. It's providing their complete information. It is about having the ability to drill down in video and graphics, but also easy to understand, attractive, visually presented. And that makes the difference because if we then look to uh, Janssen, you know, it, it seemed to be very well indicational formats, short and relevant updates, but more reminders and not such a much impact on prescription behavior. While if we look to AdV, good, great images, very stepwise com uh, communication strategy, but regarding Humira with repeating messages, while the first two ones were related to Skyridzi. So in, in the whole element that we look at in, in summary, and I'm aware of my timing, um, a couple of key takeaways. Uh, what we saw is that customer centricity matters. It's very important. It contributes to performance in the market and can be seen as a very strong competitive tool. If we, the markets itself, AbV dominates the immunology market. Hemato-onco, we see, you know, it's more competitive without a clear leader. We also saw in the case of Pfizer, harmonized and mainly personalized communication are, you know, key elements of improving that interaction even further. And of course, what we saw in the last example is that interaction experience can be monitored and analyzed in a very automated way. This is the messages that I wanted to bring to you today. And I'm more than happy to take a couple of questions if we have time. And maybe I stop presenting here. <laughs> Unfortunately, we do not have time for any questions. If you do have questions for Johan, please put them in the Q&A mm -hmm. and we will make sure that Relations gets back to you uh, with their answers on that. Yeah, so I will say, Johan, I was extremely engrossed in the presentation. So it was very good and it's it's good to see the breakout to know where different companies stand. And I think my one question, and we can address it offline and, and talk later, but is just to think about what the, the top box results of what really brought those companies to the head, you know, so that companies who may be lower on the list, we can look at what, what little things can we do specifically to that email engagement that would make things better so thank you for that perspective and breakdown for okay definitely. sorry i don't have time for for any quick q a and happy to to resolve them or to answer them by the chat enjoy the remaining of your thank day you, thank Johan. you bye-bye